Welcome to Tilopia Learning, a small e-learning company in Sydney, Australia. They create online training for banks, insurance companies, government departments, and retail businesses. It is a fast-paced environment with tight deadlines, but a casual and fun office environment. Lynn Dixon is an instructional designer who has worked at Tilopia for about one year. She came from the U.S. with a master's degree in ed tech with a focus on instructional design. Because her Australian colleagues lack formal education in instructional design, Lynn is highly regarded and asked to take the lead on many projects. It's 9 a.m. in the office and Jeanette Parks has arrived. She is the sales team leader at Tilopia and secures work with new and existing clients. Lynn has always wanted to be more involved with the sales process at Tilopia because there often seems a disconnect between what is sold to the client and what the company is capable of within the time and budget allowed. As Jeanette approaches Lynn, Lynn grows somewhat nervous as she already has a full schedule. Hi Lynn, we've got an exciting project kicking off this week and I'm told you'll be the lead. Cairns Aquarium wants to develop a touchscreen kiosk to celebrate World Wetlands Day. We'll need to fly to the aquarium on Wednesday to get started. Lynn is excited about the project as the topic and nature of the project reflect her professional pursuits. She puts her other projects in order and begins researching touchscreen interfaces as she has no experience designing instruction for touchscreen devices. Lynn and Jeanette arrive at the aquarium where they are greeted by Laura Barton, the aquarium team leader, and Ben Williams, the aquarium education manager. Laura and Ben take Lynn and Jeanette on a brief tour, viewing and discussing the location of the kiosk. They leave the exhibit area and enter a meeting room where Lynn hands out the meeting agenda and some sample project documents. They begin discussing their roles and responsibilities. Laura Barton is the Marine Park Aquarium team leader. She's also the project sponsor who has responsibility for the major reviews and sign-offs, but no day-to-day -day responsibilities or involvement. Ben Williams is the Marine Park Aquarium education manager and subject matter expert. He has day-to-day -day responsibilities on the project. He's responsible for the client timeline. He coordinates with Lynn. He handles preliminary reviews and feedback and is the resident wetlands expert. Lynn is the instructional designer on this project. She summarizes data into a high-level document communicates with stakeholders, develops detailed project plans, and works with other design team members. Jeanette Parks is the sales team lead at Tilopia. She is responsible for keeping the project on time and reminding people of deadlines. She also addresses further needs as they arise. As the meeting continues, Ben hands Lynn brochures, books, and posters, promising to send more resources electronically. He goes on to explain that the exhibit theme is connections between the Great Barrier Reef, wetlands, and catchment areas, and that the exhibit should demonstrate the relationships and interconnectedness between the environments. He also wants the kiosk to offer information on different types of wetlands and the role of wetlands in Aboriginal culture and heritage. Laura makes a point to mention that similar kiosks will be displayed at regional information centers and that the software should acknowledge each of these regional areas by name and description to honor their significant funding and support for the project. Ben enthusiastically describes his idea of showing a bird flying high in the sky then quickly flying down into a more detailed billabong setting. Jeanette chimes in and reviews the project's statement of work which specifies the agreed total content time of 20 minutes at an average inter interactivity of medium. The mention of a time limit reminds Ben to explain that they want to measure how much time any learner spends in a particular kiosk section and have a report that indicates the most popular and longest viewed sections. Jeanette confirms this is included in the project scope and Tilopia's technical developers shouldn't have an issue making it happen. Jeanette also reminds Laura and Ben that although audio narration will be included with the kiosk, the budget did not allow for the hiring of professional voice talent to do the recordings. Instead, the team would use voices from Tilopia Learning's professional staff. Lynn steers the conversation back to how a typical project should run and provides detail regarding the next steps. 
She will return to Tilopia to review Ben's content, determine which topics and activities to include, and sum summarize this information in a high-level instructional design document. Everyone is happy as the meeting concludes. Laura quickly mentions that a group of senior citizens that regularly tours the aquarium could serve as a pilot group of users if needed. On the plane trip back to Sydney, Lynn is quickly grilled by Jeanette regarding the next steps and how soon she can get them done. Jeanette needs numbers by the end of the week to book development resources. They also discuss Ben's hopes for high interactivity, which are outside the scope document. Jeanette still thinks it's possible, though. With Ben's resources in hand and initial requirements in mind, Lynn writes up the design document. During the conference call, we learn that Laura and Ben like the design proposal so far, but they want more of everything, including authentic Aboriginal voice talent and more interactivity. Lynn realizes that this means the aquarium will have to expand their budget if she cannot come up with acceptable alternatives for them. During the call, Ben's enthusiasm is contagious, and it's hard to say no to him. He is requesting a sky-level animation, and now a game. He has even offered to fly to Tilopia to meet the graphic designer and collaborate with them. This is going to be a challenge. As they are about to end the call, Laura adds a concern about the diverse audience and accessibility of the kiosk. While this is good to consider, no one had mentioned an international or diverse population earlier. So overall, the client is happy and things are on track, but everyone has some concerns. So. Where do they go from here? So let's recap who our characters are and see how they're feeling about the project after the conference call to discuss the design document and where we go from here. Here's Lynn Dixon. Lynn is focused, determined, and a capable leader. She has a master's degree in ed tech with instructional design. Lynn is thinking, man, I have my work cut out for me. They like my direction, but Ben wants more flash than we originally agreed on, and Laura just mentioned international users. Hark! Then there's Jeanette Parks, our sales lead. Jeanette is thinking, this is awesome, such a great project. Lynn worries too much. She's going to get it done. She always does. We just need to meet our deadlines. If it's not worth getting excited about, then why bother doing it? Go big or go home. Lynn Barton is the exhibit team leader at the aquarium. Laura is hospitable, but very busy. After the conference call, she sits back and thinks, Lynn has some really great ideas. However, I'm quite concerned with how she is going to design the kiosks to address the needs of our very diverse museum visitors. Some don't even speak English. And then there's Ben Williams. After the conference call, Ben feels a little deflated. I'm frustrated. There's so much that we can do with this project, and it feels like Lynn is resisting my suggestions. I really want this to be as engaging and as exciting as possible. I just hope that she understands the vision I'm trying to share with our visitors. Okay, so what about you? Given all the information and profiles, what do you think? Put yourself in Lynn's shoes. <laughs>